The Disability and Philanthropy Forum presents Mason Davis, Executive Director of Funders Concerned About AIDS. I was reflecting that, uh, especially around talking about COVID and the situation then, like I remember, you know, my first job in 1993 was at Chicago's Gay and Lesbian Center which really was just a gay and lesbian center at the time. We weren't so great at bi and trans inclusion yet. Um, but I learned uh, so clearly then, like if you have a cold, if you think you might be sick, don't go to work. Like you are working beside people who have serious health conditions and your cold could see somebody else death, right? And there's a sense of like, community and shared responsibility for keeping each other safe. Um, keeping each other safe on the street, keeping each other safe at work, making sure people are safe at home. And, and I was really, I think, kind of heartbroken in a lot of the conversations around COVID in, you know, how hard is it to wear a darn mask if you're sick, uh, right? Or in a space with somebody who might have a vulnerability you don't. Um, and, and it made me really actually grateful for those early lessons I learned from, you know, queer activists and HIV and AIDS activists in the 90s, uh, that we have a responsibility to each other. And by all the means, like, stay home if you're sick. It's, the world is not going to end for you, um, usually. So I think that that's, uh, you know, that is, feels very uh, kind of present for me in this conversation. And, you know, I do think sometimes we have to remind people that HIV and AIDS are conditions that are uh, covered under the ADA, um, you know, and while a lot of folks living with HIV, uh, you know, we've had amazing progress in medication for to treat people and to prevent HIV. The reality is we still have a lot of people living with HIV in the LGBT community. Um, and for some people, it is a disabling condition, whether temporarily because of medication change or symptoms or permanently for some people. Um, and so it, it just is at that intersection of LGBT rights, disability justice, and HIV. The, and, and I think we've gone too far in separating the LGBT movement and the HIV movement. They used to be one. Um, and then at some point when it was, to be honest, you know, as I've been talking to people, more folks of color getting HIV, the LGBT community kind of stepped away. Oh, that's not us. Um, we have a separate movement and we really need to challenge that as we look at who's most impacted and how we can be stronger together. Um, and I think, you know, folks, we know that folks with disabilities are at higher risk of HIV in part because of stigma suggesting that, you know, folks, depending on disability, you know, oh, they're not that sexual or they don't need prevention or no one needs to talk to them about PrEP because we're not going to talk to them about as or think of them as sexual beings. So there are real risks there, I think, as a result um, that we need to really challenge politically and in our in our own day to day lives. To continue your learning journey, visit disabilityphilanthropy.org.